Hello, and welcome to GSA SmartPay Online Tools. My name is Sarah Smith, and I'll be presenting today. I have worked for the GSA Center for Charge Card Management for the past 13 years. For most of that time, I have managed external communications through our website and online training. The GSA SmartPay website was launched in 2008. With every update or change to the website, our goal is to create a secure, modern, and customer-friendly solution for you. Feel free to type any questions in the chat box. At the end of the presentation, I will choose a few questions to answer live. The rest I will respond to in the chat. Let's get started. Today you will receive a virtual tour of the GSA SmartPay and online training website. I will go into detail about the different training reports offered for level one AOPCs. I will highlight other online tools and the different communication tools offered through the Center for Charge Card Management. And I will give an update on any exciting projects or developments planned for next year. Hopefully many of you have already visited the website, but if you haven't, the link is https colon slash slash smartpay.gsa.gov. If you didn't catch that, it will also be written on the bottom of each slide. To get to the GSA SmartPay online training, you can either click on the visit online training link in the main menu bar at the top of the website or go directly to https colon slash slash training.smartpay.gsa.gov. Just last year, we modernized the look and feel of the website to keep up with trends in the industry. The site is adaptable to all screen sizes, including being easily accessible from a mobile device or tablet. The website content includes program information, tools, and resources. It supports our global communi community of program coordinators, approving officials, account holders, businesses, state and local governments, and more. One of the greatest enhancements to the website is the new searching capability, which makes finding information easier than ever. Here is an overview of what is actually happening on the website. The website hosted 535,296 visitors this fiscal year as of March 2021 and 741,716 visitors in fiscal year 2020. Just under a third of our visitors are mobile users. From 2019 to 2020, there has been an increase in visitors as our website continues to expand. The latest website design categorizes navigation by program role. For example, there are four ma major sections, general information about the GSA SmartPay, account holders and approving officials, program coordinators, and businesses and vendors. Across the center of the homepage, card images highlight the different options GSA SmartPay offers, including purchase, travel, travel tax advantage, fleet, and integrated. There are three main areas on the homepage where we will post important or new information and program updates. Further down, there are a few statistical graphs for spend and transactions within the program quick links to smart bulletins, news and events, and shortcut icons to more frequently visited sections. The GSA SmartPay program was established in 1998 and is the world's largest government charge card and commercial payment solutions program. It provides services to more than 560 federal agencies, organizations, and Native American tribal governments. Key players within the program include agency or organization program coordinator, coordinators, or AOPCs, approving officials, or AOs, account holders, also called cardholders, the designated billing office, the transaction dispute officer, the electronic commerce office, the contractor bank, and the merchants. There is a colorful graph on the website under how GSA SmartPay works that I would recommend checking out to find more details about what happens during a transaction. Some benefits of the GSA SmartPay payment solutions include agency cost savings, agency refunds, safety and transparency, electronic access to data, worldwide acceptance, and discount programs. 
The GSA SmartPay customer agencies and organizations have the opportunity to earn refunds or money back to their agencies. Refunds are earned based on dollars or spend volume. You can read more about refunds on our website. The GSA SmartPay website houses the most recent copy of the GSA SmartPay 3 master contract, including the latest contract modifications, links to attachments, and contractor bank information. There is also information on who is eligible to use the GSA SmartPay master contract as well as historical information such as the GSA SmartPay 2 master contract and the GSA SmartPay transition information. The GSA SmartPay contracting officer determines eligibility for the program. Currently, state and local governments are not authorized to use the program. Agency task orders are not housed on our website. To obtain a copy of your agency's task order, you must contact your bank directly. There is an entire section on the website dedicated to program statistics, which was just recently updated with new interactive graphs and information. The program statistics overview and executive summary is updated annually and contains information such as the total spend, total refunds, and top agency spend within the program. Monthly sales, transactions, and account holder data is updated on a spreadsheet each month with new information that agencies can download and use. The GSA SmartPay Refunds program illustrates net refunds since 1997 in an interactive graph, including SmartPay 1, SmartPay 2, and now SmartPay 3. In fiscal year 20, agencies received over $403 million in refunds. Interesting data metrics are updated regularly and include statistical information chosen by GSA that we thought you might find interesting. Examples include travel spend by city, decreases in convenience check each year, and the increase in chip card usage and spend over time. GSA also provides current and historical delinquency metrics for the CFO Act agencies to keep them informed on the overall financial management health of the GSA SmartPay program. Top vendor reports are additional statistical information updated each year on top airline, rental car, and hotel vendors. The GSA SmartPay purchase card statistics report are posted here as required by FAR 4.606, and the socioeconomic statistics reports provided by provides government-wide spend for socioeconomic categories such as women-owned small business or veteran-owned small business. The GSA SmartPay Savings Calculator is an interactive tool on our website designed to support decisions to move spend over to the GSA SmartPay program and gives estimates for savings in the areas of contract spend, grant spend, local travel subsidy spend. There are four major pieces of information you will need to enter. First, agency spend, which is the sum of purchase, travel, and fleet spend entered in by the user. If you don't know the breakdown of spend by business line, you can enter all spend under purchase and put zeros for travel and fleet spend. Second, additional spend. This is equal to the total contract grant and local travel spend, not on the GSA SmartPay card. Third, migrating spend percentages, which equals the percentage of total spend if migrated to a GSA SmartPay solution. And last, agency savings summary, which equals the current agency GSA SmartPay card spend multiplied by the average sales refund percentage for today compared to in the future. If you have any questions with this tool, there is a helpful guide on the website which explains each calculation. The policy section contains all relevant legislation and regulations. However, in addition to what is posted on our website, it is recommended that you also review your agency-specific policy. Appendix B of the OMB Circular A123 prescribes policies and procedures on how to maintain internal controls and reduce the risk of fraud, waste, and abuse within the program. Topics such as management plans, training, risk management, and best practices are covered here. OMB Memorandum M3.1.1 
1321 provides guidance in response to Public Law 112-194, OMB Memorandum M1726 discusses reducing reporting burdens on the federal government, and OMB Memo M2021 is the implementation guidance for supplemental funding provided in response to the coronavirus 2019 or COVID-19. Direct links to the FTR and the FAR can be found here. We also provide a prohibited vendor listing and additional information about FAR case 2018-017 that prohibits the purchase of covered tele telecommunications equipment and services from vendors who sell products containing spyware. And finally, there are links to per diem rates. Smart tax is still one of our most popular sections of the website. It highlights key tax information, such as legal history, including what the US Constitution says about state taxes and how it applies to your GSA Smart Pay account, US Supreme Court decisions and payment liability. How do you recognize your account? This area of the website explains what the account numbers mean and how to identify if your travel account is a centrally built account, CBA, or an individually built account, IBA. This information is key when identifying tax exempt status. I added a screenshot of the three types of travel cards with an explanation on how to identify them. As you can see, the IVA travel card has a six digit of a one, two, three, or four. The CBA travel card has a six digit of a six, seven, eight, nine, or zero. And the tax advantage travel card has a six digit of a five. This section also includes information on surcharges and other common tax questions. And a US state tax map and specific tax information. The shortcut to this page is smartpay.gsa.gov slash smart tax. So once you have determined what type of account you have, either CBA or IBA, you can go to the map to find out how taxes are handled in your state or the state where you will be traveling. This interactive map allows you to navigate the tax issue a little easier. Each state determines its tax exemption status and procedures for state taxes. CBAs are exempt from state taxes in every state. IBAs are exempt from, from state taxes in some states. Some states require forms while others do not. In addition, some states also require special instructions or additional information that is not required of other states. All forms and instructions can be found here. Just click on the state where you are traveling to or purchasing from to find out how they handle state taxes. A table will pop up where you can see what is exempt and not exempt. In the example on the slide, I've chosen Massachusetts. In this example, IBA travel account lodging and rental car purchases are exempt. At this time, state and local governments are not authorized to utilize the GSA SmartPay contract. However, state and local governments are welcome to review the GSA SmartPay program offerings and best practices to serve as a guideline for similar payment programs. We've posted a few resources, including the lessons learned in transitioning to the GSA SmartPay chip and pin enabled charge cards from a card issuance perspective. The strategic payment solutions section of the website explains solutions offered under the GSA SmartPay 3 master contract that will maximize efficiency and increase savings and refunds for customer agencies. These are new ways to take your program to the next level, and many of which are included at no additional cost to your agency. Strategic payment solutions will allow you to gain efficiencies on current spend, capture additional spend, increased refunds, improve oversight and control, and gain transparency and accountability within your program. Card not present solutions include declining balance cards, ghost cards, mobile payments, and single use accounts or SUAs. There are five new videos that help explain a few of the strategic payment solutions, including card not present solutions, 
the GSA SmartPay Tax Advantage Travel Card Account, ePayables, contactless payment solutions, and virtual travel cards. Links to these videos are located throughout the website as well as under multimedia on the, on the GSA SmartPay website and additional training on the online training website. What are ePayables and what kind of ePayable solutions are offered under the GSA SmartPay program? ePayable solutions basically replace the accounts payable process such that electronic transactions take place directly between the government and the supplier. Examples include Supplier Initiated Payments, or SIP, Buyer Initiated Payments, or BIP, and Straight Through Processing, or STP. We get into a lot more detail on each type of ePayable solution on our website, including diagrams of how each type works and a short video to help visually explain the process. Also on our website, we have examples of when some of these strategic payment solutions can be used, such as recurring payments, new employees, temporary employees, or part-time employees, supplier retail operations, and specialized or complex invoicing processes. The GSA SmartPay logos and card designs are available online and easily downloadable for your agency to use. Check out the GSA SmartPay virtual t-shirts. The glossary located on the website defines the common GSA SmartPay program terminology and acronyms. If you are new to the program, this is a great resource if you have any questions or don't understand a specific topic. We have moved the resource section from the main menu and listed it under either program coordinator, account holder and approving officials or businesses and vendors. As you can see in the slide, here are the additional resources for AOPCs. Each section contains brochures, flipbooks, presentations, and other information organized by business line. For example, all resources are sorted by travel, purchase, fleet, and general, followed by the forum presentations, transition documents, and links to the acquisition gateway and Interact. All account holder and approving official specific information can be found under the account holder and approving official tab on the main top menu of the website. From here, account holders select either purchase, travel, fleet, or integrated. Some of the topics discussed in this section include program overview, responsibilities, and other specific information to that business line. In addition, under the account holder and approving officials tab is information about training resources, such as guides, presentations, and publications, fraud prevention, and common questions that account holder or approving officials may have. All program coordinator specific information can be found under the program coordinator tab in the main top navigation. Similar to account holders and approving officials, the program coordinator information is organized by business line, purchase, travel, fleet, and integrated. Choose the desired business line to find information about program overview, best practices, reporting a lost or stolen card, and reporting tools, and more. Additional information for AOPCs include training, resources such as guides, presentations, and publications, an audit repository that stores GSA SmartPay multi-agency and agency-specific audit information, fraud prevention, and common questions related to managing a GSA SmartPay program. The business and vendor section contains information specific to businesses, including an overview of the GSA SmartPay program, recognizing the GSA SmartPay account and tax exemption, vendor resources, and other common questions vendors may have. The most frequently asked questions by vendors are about tax exemption or how much it costs to accept the GSA SmartPay card. For all of you who are wondering, the GSA SmartPay accounts operate just like the commercial market. So if a vendor already accepts Visa and MasterCard for non-government purchases, they can also accept the GSA SmartPay payment solution at no additional cost. Under contact, we list the bank customer service centers. A customer would contact the bank directly for questions related to their specific account. For example, making a payment, handling a dispute, or not receiving their card in the mail, to name a few examples. 
The online account access is a direct link to the login page for the account holder, where they view their purchases and pay their bill. The GSA SmartPay program support assists with general questions about the program or questions about the website and online training, such as help resetting a password. If you are looking for someone specific, we also have specific points of contact listed here. Smart bulletins can be found on the home page or also in the footer of the website. They provide information and guidance to customer agencies and discuss topics such as new or updated policies, regulations, program management best practices, task order administration, master contract changes, and related laws. The multimedia section is where our video series are located, including the Charge Up series, Mythbusters, and the new Strategic Payment Solutions video series. Stay tuned, we are continually adding new videos about important GSA SmartPay topics. The events section of the website features upcoming events, including the GSA SmartPay Forum and other SmartPay related events. Events posted here include both in-person and virtual training events that benefit AOPCs, AOs, and others who help manage their agency's program. And the searching capabilities of the new website are really good. So if you can't find something, use the search bar at the top right corner of the page. The GSA SmartPay website continues to be easily accessible from any device, including mobile and tablets. This includes state tax information, online training, and videos. Let's talk about the OMB training requirements. If you are not familiar with Appendix B of OMB Circular A-123, in general, it serves as a framework for agencies to best manage their government charge card programs. The circular requires each agency to provide initial training to all account holders and account managers prior to appointment and then at a minimum every three years thereafter. This may be required more frequently depending on your agency's training policy. I recommend that you double check your agency's policy to find out what your requirement is. If you would like to read more about the OMB requirements, Appendix B of the OMB Circular A123 can be found on the GSA SmartPay website under Policies. So now that you know the OMB training requirement, you may be wondering where you can find and take training either for yourself or those under your purview. GSA offers free government-wide training courses to all agencies. Some agencies prefer to provide their own agency-specific training. So again, I recommend becoming familiar with your agency-specific training policy before completing or directing your account holders to take their training. Courses we offer include two travel courses, one for travel account holders and approving officials, and one for AOPCs two purchase courses, one for purchase account holders and approving officials, and one for AOPCs, and one fleet AOPC course. The online training is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We also offer training reports for level one AOPCs, which can be run for account holders under their purview. Let's talk a little more about what the training courses cover. In general, all of the GSA SmartPay online training courses will cover the following topics tailored for each specific business line. Each course starts with an introductory program overview. Next, the course will explain who the key program participants are within your agency and outside your agency. Role-based responsibilities are discussed as well as topics specific to each business line. Applicable policies and regulations are covered in the course. The AOPC courses cover risk mitigation. And finally, we will provide you with information on where to go with questions and where to find additional resources. Course material can be viewed online or it can be downloaded as a PDF to view offline or saved for reference. If you choose to download the course material, remember that you must be logged in on the live website to complete the online quiz. There is no option to complete the quiz offline. Navigating the GSA SmartPay online training is easy. First, use either the top menu or scroll down the page to find courses related to your role within the program. Next, click on the name of the specific type of course you would like to complete. For the example I'm using today, I selected the Purchase Training for AOPCs. 
Once selected, you will be taken directly into Lesson 1 of that course. All training content is open to the public and can be viewed or downloaded without logging in. However, if you wish to complete the online quiz and receive your training certificate, then you will need to create a new account if you haven't already done so, or log in if you already have an account. Each training course will take approximately 45 minutes to complete and is worth one CLP. If you are a first time user, you will need to create a new account by completing the one page, one time registration. When creating a new account, make sure you do the following. Double check that your email and agency are correct. If your agency name is wrong, you will not show up in the reports run for your agency. If your email is wrong, you might experience trouble logging in or resetting your password. Select your role, either AOPC or account holder, then create your own unique user ID. This can be anything you choose, just please keep it professional. If you find that you receive an error message stating that your user ID already exists. It means that someone has already chosen that ID. Just keep trying something different until it is accepted. Lastly, set up a password and save your information by clicking on the Create New Account button. Now you have an account. So how do you know if you're logged in? You know you are successfully logged in when you see a Welcome Back message near the top of the screen and my account is a clickable item on the top navigation menu. If you have taken online training with us before, you will also see a list of your quizzes and a link to the certificate under the listing of courses offered. This is a homepage shortcut for your certificates if you need to view, download, or print. Before you can take the quiz to get the certificate of completion, you will need to review the course material. This material is updated periodically to make sure customers are getting trained on the most up-to-date information. Clicking on the desired course will take you directly into the introduction. You will find the option to download the training as a PDF here to view offline or save as a reference. Click through each lesson to review course material. Advance the training by either clicking on the next button located at the bottom right or by clicking on the red down arrow next to the lesson title at the top of the page. At the end of each training course, you will be asked to complete a short quiz to get a certificate of completion. Each quiz is between 20 to 25 questions, and you will need a score of 75 or higher to receive a completion certificate. If you score lower than 75%, you can retake the quiz as many times as needed to pass. Click Start Quiz to begin. I recommend completing the quiz in one session as sometimes problems occur if you leave the quiz halfway through and try to come back to it later. Your quiz score results will display after you complete the final question in the quiz. If you passed your quiz, you will also see a link that says View Certificate. Clicking on that link will display your certificate. If you did not pass, no link will be displayed and the score posted will be less than 75. But the good news is that you can try again until you pass. You can view your completed courses and certifications anytime you choose by logging into your account and clicking on My Certificates. The screen that displays next will show the title of the course, the date completed, score, and a link to your certificate if you passed. Click on the View Certificate link to view, save, and print your training certificate for any course displayed in your list. If using a PC, Control-P should allow you to print or save your certificate. However, permissions and systems may vary, so if you experience problems saving or printing, you will need to contact your agency's IT department for assistance. Here we have an example of what the certificate looks like, including your name, completion date, and the agency name. While we are on the topic of certificates, let's talk briefly about the GSA SmartPay Program Certificate or GSPC. Once earned, this certificate is stored in the GSA SmartPay training site, but the coursework can only be completed during either the in-person or virtual GSA SmartPay training forum. The certificate is obtained by completing the required coursework 
and by possessing actual hands-on experience working with the GSA SmartPay program. Use of this certificate program is voluntary and intended to ensure that charge card personnel have the fundamental training and experience needed to work with a government charge card program. To meet the course requirements, candidates must complete a total of seven classes. These include two GSA SmartPay qualifying classes and five bank or brand qualifying classes. For experience, a candidate must have a minimum of six months of continuous hands-on experience working with the GSA SmartPay program prior to applying for the certification. Candidates will receive an email after the forum with instructions on how to self-certify experience and receive the certificate. Complete the questionnaire to confirm the minimum experience requirement is met. Certificates will be immediately available on the GSA SmartPay training website under my account, My Certificates. Once this certification is obtained, it will remain active for three years, provided the recipient complies with the maintenance training requirements required by OMB Circular A123 Appendix B. More detailed information can be found by reading Smart Bulletin number 22, which can be found on our website under Smart Bulletins. Under the My Account link, you can view or edit your information, view quiz score, and view and download your certificates. For most users, all information can be edited. Level 1 AOPCs may not edit their agency name. If you are registered as a Level 1 and need to change your agency, you will need to contact the GSA SmartPay Program Support Team for assistance at gsa underscore smartpay at gsa.gov and provide the new agency name for your account. All other roles are allowed to change their agency. In addition to our business line-based training for account holders, AOs, and AOPCs, the GSA SmartPay training site also offers videos on specific topics. This is a great way to learn more about a topic of interest for you or your agency such as the ePayables or the Accounts Payable File Review. These training videos are available in a brief, digestible format. We offer several different video series that are com comprised of short videos on related topics. One example is the new GSA SmartPay Strategic Payment Solutions series, which highlights the different strategic solutions offered under the GSA SmartPay 3 Master Contract. We are continuing to expand additional training offerings by adding new videos, so check back often. New additional training videos will also be displayed on the GSA SmartPay homepage, so you will be aware of new releases as soon as you visit our website. As mentioned earlier, the GSA SmartPay online training site offers reports on training taken. All users have access to a report for their personal training achievements. Approved Level 1 AOPCs have access to reports that run results only for those users who have the same agency listed on their account. The reports offered can be exported to CSV to allow for download and manipulation within Excel. There are two types of reports. The first is general reporting, which returns numbers only. These reports include monthly trainee report, total agency quiz report, and the monthly quiz report. The second is the detail reporting, which provides some specific user information. These reports include the agency trainee report and a trainee search. Now that I've given you a brief overview of the reports, let's talk about each report in a little more detail. The quizzes taken by user is available to everyone. This displays the quiz results for the user who is logged in. This is similar to what you see under the My Account, My Certificates page. The rest of the reports we'll, we will discuss are available only to approved Level 1 AOPCs or their delegates. The monthly training report shows the number of new user accounts registered per month for your agency. This provides an overview only with no detail information. The initial results are for all roles, but you can have the ability to filter on roles and choose specific timeframes. For example, let's say I run a report for GSA as my agency from January through March. The re results would tell me the number of new users each month, 
such as 200 users registered in January, 200 users registered in February, 50 in March, etc. The total agency quiz report shows the total number of quizzes successfully passed per quiz for your agency. The initial results you'll see are for all quizzes going back to 2011. You can choose to filter on a specific course, quiz, and time frame. This also provides general information. For example, using, a GS, using GSA as my agency again, I can run the report to learn that from 2011 to present day, 4,425 people passed the travel account holder AO's quiz. The report will also tell me how many passed the other quizzes for that time period. You can even use this report to find out how many people in your agency have the GSA SmartPay program certification. The monthly quiz report includes the number of past quizzes per month. This is overview information only with no specific user details. Initial results are for all courses, but you can filter to see results for one specific course and time frame. This report is similar to the total agency quiz report, except it breaks it down by month. So whereas we saw a total of 4,425 passed, the total account holders training in GSA from 2011 to present, we can further define those results to see six quizzes were successfully completed in January of 2020, eight in February of 2020, etc. Agency training report returns user details such as username, first name, last name, agency, quiz, score, completions, completion dates, and a list of quiz results for users within your agency. This report is helpful if you have a list of people who you need to confirm have completed their training for a specific quiz and time period. The report will show you the past quiz results for your agency and or a particular quiz. You can filter by quiz and date. This is one of our two most commonly used reports. Most AOPCs export this information into Excel where they can then manipulate it within their own system. For example, if you have a larger agency, you can use Excel to filter the data by bureau if your email address reflects the bureau name. If you wanna search for a specific user account, use the trainee search report. This report returns detailed information such as first name, last name, email, agency, role, and a link to user details where you can view quiz scores and certificates for that user. You can filter by first name, last name, email, and or date. Please note, as with other reports, this report only searches within your agency. If an account holder is registered under a different agency, their information will not come up in the search results for your agency. When might you wanna use this report? This would be helpful if you have a few where you can't find their certificate of completion. You can search by first and last name or email to assist in locating it within the system. If a particular user is not coming up in this report, you can contact GSA to assist. We have access to all agencies and we will be able to help you determine if the person you are looking for has an account. Most of the time, if an AOPC can't find a user, it's because they're incorrectly listed under another agency. This wraps up our section about training reports. Much like the GSA SmartPay website, our GSA SmartPay training site is also mobile friendly. Isn't it great to know that you can access all of your GSA SmartPay resources wherever you go? You can do everything you would on the desktop version, including taking a course, completing a quiz, and viewing your certificate right from your mobile device. Why not watch one of our videos we have listed in our additional resources when you have a spare moment or just want to learn something new. Speaking of mobility, let's leave the training site and move on to the GSA SmartPay Travel Card app. The GSA SmartPay Travel Card app is available for iOS, Android, and BlackBerry devices through the Apple App Store, Google Play, and Amazon App Stores. Some of the features included are links to GSA Per Diem, MyTSA, and the National Weather Service. There's also a section called My Trips, which is an itinerary page to keep track of your travel. Notification functions include a trip reminder. 
Unfortunately, the travel app is down for maintenance, but keep checking back for updates. The GSA SmartPay developed an automated refund review tool for agencies to automatically calculate refunds on a quarterly basis. To aid customer agencies in recalculating and reviewing refunds paid from their contractor bank, the Center for Charge Card Management, or CCCM, Data Management Division developed the Automated Refund Review Tool for agencies to automatically calculate refunds on a quarterly basis. The Automated Refund Review Tool is a method of re-performing GSA SmartPay refund calculations. The tool follows the refund calculation business rules as defined by the GSA SmartPay 3 master contract. As stated in Public Law 112-194, purchase and travel accounts must be reviewed by their agency for accuracy and properly recorded as a receipt to their agency that pays their monthly bill. Please note, this tool does not replace the requirement for agencies to perform their own independent review and assessment as indicated in Public Law 112-194. Level 1 AOPCs can download the tool and user guide by visiting their CFO Act Agency Reports and Dashboards group on GSA Interact, interact.gsa.gov. We use GSA Interact to provide our AOPCs with a private website to browse contacts, ask questions to other program coordinators, or reach out to the GSA SmartPay program. You can also view upcoming events here. We have two groups available on GSA Interact. The first is called Discussions with GSA SmartPay. It is a private online community allowing program coordinators a central location to share ideas and best practices. The second group is called the CFO Act Agency Reports and Dashboards, which provides fiscal year metrics, dashboards, CFO reports, and refund summary, summary reports specific to CFO Act agencies. To get signed up, go to interact.gsa.gov and register. Then send an email to gsa underscore smartpay at gsa.gov with your user ID so we can add you to the private group. You can find a link to interact in the footer of our website. What is the Data Warehouse? The Data Warehouse is an electronic platform in which data is directly imported, aggregated, and normalized from contractor systems in order to allow analysis of GSA SmartPay spend and transactional data. This application houses numerous dashboards and reports that can be accessed via the web. It was developed using SAP business objects and the dashboard's reports are dynamic in nature, allowing a user to access them via several dimensions, such as agency, bureau in most cases, business line, fiscal year, etc. Dashboards are available and include purchase, travel, fleet, refund, and program metrics. Example reports are convenience checks and FSSI, the data warehouse continuously evolves and is available to agencies, primarily the 24 CFO Act agencies. For more information, contact Shane Brocious or Perry Hampton. I'd like to take a moment to mention the two mobile tools offered, Tier 1 products and services under the GSA SmartPay 3 master contract at no additional cost. First, we have mobile applications, which provide the ability to access EAS pay invoices, receive text or email alerts, and view statements and payment information. Second are mobile payments, which allow the user the ability to make secure payments using a mobile device at the point of sale. If you're interested in mobile solutions, contact your GSA SmartPay contractor bank to ask for additional information on specific offerings outlined in your task order. Would you like to know where to find out about the latest updates and announcements? One of our most convenient ways is through social media. Follow, like, or link to us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. In addition, check, website, check the website regularly for updates and announcements. Participation in GSA SmartPay meetings and focus groups is not only a great way to connect with us at GSA, but also with your fellow AOPCs. And lastly, read all email communication from GSA SmartPay and pass them along to your account holders as appropriate. 
You can also connect with other AOPCs to share best practices at the annual GSA SmartPay Training Forum and on GSA Interact. If you would like to get in touch with a member of the GSA SmartPay team for general information about the program or to escalate issues, you can email us at gsa underscore smartpay at gsa.gov or call our program support line staffed from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time at 703-605-2808. Although we can't officially speak on any upcoming website enhancements just yet, I assure you that we are continuing to research and design the best ways to communicate information to our customers. I would like to mention a new video just released called the Virtual Tra Travel Account. It is part of the Strategic Payment Solutions series. In addition, we have begun working on a new series called RISE, or Realizing Innovation with GSA SmartPay Expansion, where we challenge contracting officers to rise to the challenge of migrating spend over to the GSA SmartPay program so their agency can benefit from increased refunds. So if you're interested in learning more about this topic or other topics, keep a lookout for the new videos. For any questions regarding the information presented in this training, feel free to email me at sarah.smith at gsa.gov. Thank you for attending today's session on the GSA SmartPay online tools.